Over the last 52 years, Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway, has increased in market value by an annualized 20.9%. Compare that to the S&P 500's 9.9%. That's a total return of 2.4 million percent versus the market's less than 16,000 percent. With his quick wit, Buffett is constantly dropping value through metaphors. So much value, in fact, it can be overwhelming when trying to learn from the master. So I've pulled out five of his top tips for investors taught through metaphors. Coming up. I'm so glad you're here. I'm excited to have the opportunity to help you build your rapidly growing, highly diversified net worth one video at a time. As you might expect, there is so much that can be learned from Buffett's experience and expertise. I particularly appreciate his well-crafted metaphors. I'm gonna take you through five of my favorites and the lessons that can be extracted from each. And I'm sorry, but I'm gonna save my favorite for last. Number one, should you find yourself in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is likely to be more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. Often investors become emotionally attached to a particular company or strategy. They, they try to find quick fixes when in reality, the best bet for long-term survival would be to just find a new strategy, research and discover a better company, or to just get out altogether. To succeed as an investor or trader, you have to be willing to accept and part with your losses. As long as you hang on to that loser, there is still hope that it could turn around tomorrow or the next day. It can be hard to sell, I get it. Once you finally close out your order, the loss feels more real because it is, there's no chance now that you're gonna make it back with that particular stock at least. So many investors succumb to this emotional trap. You will not win every time. You may even be wrong most of the time, but you can still win long-term if you can learn to be okay with that fact and keep your losses small. Number two. The most important thing to do if you find yourself in a hole is stop digging. Although similar to number one, I see this metaphor as being more related to your investment strategy. The sooner you can recognize that your strategy isn't working anymore or simply doesn't work long-term, whether that's because it just doesn't work for you and your personality or because it was ill-conceived to begin with, the sooner you can recognize that and move on, the better off you'll be. That can be hard. Sometimes people start doubling down when a strategy that may have been recently successful suddenly stops producing results. They keep betting more and more, hoping that the next bet will pull them all the way out of the increasingly deep hole they're standing in. Don't make that mistake. Be open to change. Always be learning as much as you can and striving to find better ways, even perhaps especially when you're comfortable. Number three, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. When the market is going up and has been for a long time, caution is often thrown to the wind and everyone thinks they're genius. It's not until the market corrects or crashes that everyone can see who actually understands how to succeed with stocks long-term. And that crash, it may take a while to come, like decades sometimes. And during the dot-com bubble, for example, Buffett was ridiculed as a dinosaur being left behind due to his inability to see the new stock market paradigm. Old, tried and true valuation metrics were thrown out the window. And young hotshot investors were lauded as visionaries, as, as investment profits, as they took on increasingly greater risks. Banking it all and more on pretty much anything with a dot com in its name. For years, these young hotshots looked brilliant. The market seemed to be proving that they were right. But when the tide went out, as the bear market finally hit, these investors and those who followed their advice were ruined. You can apply this personally, as in 
if you've never had money in the market during a crash, just continue to be aware of that fact. Don't get too cocky. Don't let your guard down. But I also strongly recommend you apply this lesson to those whose advice you're following. If that expert or successful investor has never experienced a major market crash while having any significant amount of money in the market, like 2007 or 2000 major, then you should take what they say with a, a handful of salt. Because think about it, they've only experienced half of an investment cycle themselves. How can they advise and prepare you for long-term success? After all, knowing what to do to prepare yourself and weather the chaos of a bear market is the most difficult part of long-term investment success. The investors I highlight and that we learn from here on this channel have absolutely proven themselves through the ups and the inevitable and often destructive downs of the market. Personally, I've had money in the market for as long as I can remember, yet it's those investment lessons I learned from the crash of 2007 that have most influenced my investment strategy and perspective today, specifically on the importance of strategic risk management. So please be careful who you trust. Ask yourself, will they be able to help me long-term? Like really? Or has their success just come because we're in a bull market? How do they know how to build a portfolio that can endure the inevitable crashes? Just make sure you're covered because the tide will go out. Number four. Never test the depths of the river with both of your feet. When investing with a new strategy, you should always proceed with caution. Maybe you watched my video on four ways to make money in stocks, and now you're exploring day trading or penny stocks. Whatever you do, don't start with all your money. When you first learned to ride a bike, you didn't just jump on at the top of a steep hill with heavy traffic that'd be suicidal. You should exercise that same caution with your money. Don't be suicidal with it. Start with a little bit, gain some experience, a lot of experience, so much experience, and then increase incrementally as you become more comfortable and more familiar with all of the risks involved. Number five, don't try and drive a 9,800 pound truck over a bridge that says its capacity is 10,000 pounds. Go down the road a little bit and find one that says capacity 15,000 pounds. I love this principle so much. It helps me sleep at night and not stress day to day about my portfolio. Buffett is referring to the concept of investing within a margin of safety. It's the idea that you only invest in companies where your conservative calculations suggest there is a substantial upside potential and little downside risk, as in the market is unjustifiably discounting the value of an otherwise healthy company. That way, even if you're wrong, you could still make money. And if you don't, at least you're not as likely to lose very much. If that first bridge's capacity is off, by just a few hundred pounds, one impatient decision could ruin you. On the other hand, if you continue to look and find that second bridge, if that second bridge's capacity is off by a few thousand pounds, you'll still make it across just fine. This is how I invest. And this is why I can sleep well at night. This is why I don't stress about my portfolio from day to day. And these are the opportunities I seek. You'll see that as you glance through the stock recommendations I've made and will continue to make here on this channel. I'll link to the playlist of all the stock ideas I've ever covered here on YouTube. The most recent will be the first in the playlist, but most of my ideas have a one to two year time horizon. So a lot of them will still be relevant today. If that type of research interests you, I'd encourage you to explore that playlist. And if you'd like more, 
thoroughly researched ideas like those, then you should also check out my Patreon page. That's where I share all my ideas to a private group of interested and concerned investors. If that sounds like you, I'd love to see you inside. And if not, that's fine too. There's plenty here on this channel that can help you succeed. So which of these Buffettisms is your favorite? Or did I miss your favorite? There are so many. Let me know in the comments. And if you want to keep learning and working toward your rapidly growing, highly diversified net worth, then don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell. That way you won't miss any of these timeless lessons or any of our time sensitive stock ideas. If you liked this video, let me know with a like and share it with others who might find it helpful as well. Whatever you do, don't stop learning. Either of the videos here would be a great next step. I'll see you there. Take care.